गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन टूडेज क्लास इज ऑन इलेक्ट्रोकार्डियोग्राफी इलेक्ट्रोकार्डियोग्राफी इज द मेथड ऑफ रिकॉर्डिंग एंड इंटरप्रिटेशन ऑफ ई सी जी अद ई के जी ई सी जी is the commonest clinical parameter which is used to assess the cardiac status of an individual or a patient as a very important diagnostic tool it diagnoses lot of cardiac abnormalities is also used in research experimental research clinical research and this measurement or interpretation of ecg it's based on the principle that the heart generates electric rhythm or the electricity which also spreads in the heart it's very simple also so bedside in fact you can take it as a bedside investigative tool before we move on to the ecg and its waves recording interpretation etc i will go to some basic aspects of how the heart generates electric rhythm and spreads it because this is the basis of ecg this diagram so shows uh, how the heart generates electric rhythm or the cardiac impulse you just follow the numbers here number 1 2 3 4 and this of course a human heart you can see the various chambers the right atrium left atrium right ventricle left ventricle in the walls muscular walls number 1 let's follow from number 1 which is the pacemaker of the human heart sc node sinusoidal node which is the one which it rhythmically generates electricity so once it spreads uh, it generates its the impulse is spread along the walls of the atria and both the atria are simultaneously excited or depolarized you can follow those dotted lines both the atria right and left are quickly simultaneously depolarized so that is a phase of the action potential or the impulse depolarization first phase then you can follow the impulse num to number 2 which is the av node atrioventricular node which collects all the impulses and slightly delays it before the both the atria get excited once the atria get excited they contract of course excitation follows the contraction that's the idea of the excitation let's not go into the contraction let's follow the excitation so this excitation now enters the ventricle the only connecting excitable link to the ventricle is the bundle of his or the av bundle there's only link electrical link between atria and ventricle the may electricity can spread only through this bundle of his bundle of his hias is now quickly that both the ventricle gets excited through the bundle branches and the purkinje fibers number 3 the right and left bundle branches number 4 the purkinje fibers which are ultimate branches of this this system entire system we call a conducting system reaching the ventricular muscle fibers thousand of millions of fibers get excited by these purkinje fibers so they are so quick these purkinje fibers in the bundle branch are so quick in conduction that both the left and right ventricles are <clears throat> excited simultaneously <clears throat> so both left and right ventricles 
are depolarized. So the action potential has spread from the atria to the ventricle. The atrial depolarization is followed by the ventricular depolarization. Of course, the repolarization process also follows left, vent left atrial depolarization, right atrial depolarization followed by the repolarization of these two chambers. Ventricular depolarization is followed by the repolarization processes to complete the action potential. So the action potential spreads like this. So sequentially from left to the, I mean to the atria to the ventricle. This is the basis of the ECG. Because these impulses which are picked and recorded in ECG. So there's a sequential orderly spread of impulses in the human heart rhythmically occurring just another diagram to show how the impulse spreads <clears throat> follow the four diagrams of the heart human heart the sequence you follow sa node generates impulses you can see those yellow shadings First diagram shows SA node generating impulses and spreading. And then the AV, both the AV, I mean the atria are, have got excited simultaneously. The yellow color has spread both the, both the atria. Now the yellow color is spreading onto the ventricle through the bundle branches, Purkinje fibers. The last diagram shows how both the ventricles are simultaneously excited. So the depolarization has occurred in the atria. After the atrial depolarization, ventricular depolarization has occurred. This is uh, allowed by a small delay. So atrial depolarization has to complete then ventricular depolarization. So in the ECG, these events are separately seen. Atrial depolarization is separately seen. Ventricular depolarization is separately seen as we see later. This is the basis. This you should understand. Now let's go to the ECG or electrocardiogram. Electrocardiogram is the record of the activity which is recorded by the, the procedure called as electrocardiography. It's also called AKG. Westerners, Americans spell it AKG or ECG, both same. How do you define ECG? It's nothing but a graphic recording of the electrical activities that we saw some time back. This is summated electrical activities or potentials in the entire heart and recorded by electrodes kept on the surface of the body. That's very important. We don't go to near the heart. Electrodes are surface electrodes. So it's a graphic recording of the summated electrical activity of the heart by surface electrodes. This is the comprehensive definition of ECG. <coughs> the machine, machine that records the ECG is called electrocardiograph. This is one of the, this is a little huger one. <coughs> The basic parts are electrodes, which are used as leads. The main circuit which is inside the machine and a recorder, which is in the form of a paper, run paper which is running and the record is occurring on the running paper, which is run at a particular speed, which we'll see later. So the paper moves with a particular speed there is an ink recorder which records the events. So the electrical activity from the body is fed through the leads into the machine. This is the basic parts of a ECG. Now let's quickly go through the principle. What is the principle? As I already told, it's the heart which is the center of the activity, electrical activity. So heart is assumed to be located in the center of the body. 
even though it's not in the center we assume it as in the center so the potential produced by the cardiac activity which we saw some time back this potential spread to the body surface to entire body to the body fluids because body fluids are conductors good conductors of electricity that means basically electrolytes you know body fluids is a electrolyte filled fluid so it can spread electrical impulses are spread so if you keep the sensitive electrode on any particular part of the body and these electrodes are fed to a galvanometer the galvanometer deflects this is the basis of electricity so electrodes are kept at specific sites in the body they pick up these electrical activities and these electrical activities are fed to the machine so what literally you get is a deflection which may be recorded on a paper for that you need a specific set of electrodes which you call it as a lead l e a d lead it's a set of electrodes kept at specific sites in the body surface to obtain the final electrocardiogram or the ekg this is a principle simple principle and how ecg is recorded by these leads normal ecg clinical ecg is called as 12 lead ecg where there are three standard bipolar limb leads three augmented limb leads six precordial or chest leads it's also called as a unipolar <coughs> well, i'll tell you the meaning of this bipolar unipolar later so clinical ecg is obtained by 12 lead conventionally in special situations you may have some different electrodes like esophageal leads are used now let's not bother about that so remember the there are 12 leads lead 1 2 3 these are notate notation is roman not algebra 1 2 3 roman 1 2 3 then the limb another three sets of limb leads a v r small a capital v r lowercase a uppercase v l a v l lowercase a uppercase v f a v f r is right l is left f is foot then the chest leads notate notation one v one v two v three v four v five v six v one to v six yes twelve leads let's quickly go through the procedure simple procedure you have to keep the electrodes on specific sites on the limb you can place on any part conventionally at the wrist and the ankle these are the areas chosen to keep the electrodes so you place electrodes on the limb leads for limb leads on left and right upper limbs on the wrist and for lower limbs left and right lower limbs at the ankle just at the ankle right lower limb right leg is not used for leads it's only a grounding electrode but all the four limbs are connected used for connection so leads are essentially formed between right arm left arm and left leg right leg is not used right arm left arm left leg this is for the limb leads one two three AVR, AVL and AVF. For these six leads, the three limbs, right arm, left arm, left leg are used. For the precordial or chest leads, 
there are some specific sites on the chest wall anterior chest wall where you have to place v1 v2 v3 v4 v5 v6 horizontally so the chest leads are on a horizontal plane whereas limb leads are on a frontal plane so limb leads are on a frontal plane chest leads are on a horizontal plane so these leads literally look at the heart and pick up the electrical activity for whenever you keep an electrode or place electric electrolyte jelly before you place to reduce the electrical resistance at the skin surface this is how the standard bipolar limb lead sir constructed bipolar means that there are two points at which the electrical potentials are picked both the electrodes are active electrodes said to be active that's the meaning of the bipolar now lead one limb lead one roman one is connected by placing electrodes on left arm and right arm here it's shown as the shoulder it can be any put anywhere on the arm usually on the wrist for uh, understanding sake clarity sake we have taken three points on the body anywhere you can they form a triangle we call it anthovan's triangle anthovan was the father of the <coughs> electrocardiography lead one is connected by connecting left arm to the positive pole of the galvanometer right arm to the negative pole of the galvanometer so literally we say left arm is positive right arm is negative there are two points so the voltage difference between the points are recorded through the galvanometer or the voltmeter so current passes through these voltmeters positive to negative then a deflection occurs whenever there is a electrical activity so this is lead one left arm positive right arm negative lead two between right arm and left leg so left leg positive right arm negative you connect these two left leg is connected to the positive connect and right arm to the negative end this forms lead 2 for lead 3 left leg is positive left arm is negative this is how you connect the lead 3 left leg positive left arm negative so this is the standard bipolar limb leads lead 1 left arm right arm lead 2 left leg right arm lead 3 left leg left arm they form three limbs of the equilateral triangle or anthovan's triangle heart is said to be in the center of this triangle as i said you can collect connect the electrodes anywhere as long as you form this triangle <coughs> now going to the next three leads avr avl avf this is how avr is connected this is unipolar because <coughs> one pole is made negative the other is the active here the active electrode is formed by connecting the right arm the red one which is the positive terminal the left arm and left leg together connected to form negative pole it is essentially at zero potential let's not go to the details of how you obtain zero etc so other two arms other two legs i mean the uh, extremities left arm and left leg they form the negative pole 
the right arm forms positive pull this is the a v r v is unipolar e is augmented because there is an augmentation process amplification which will not go into the detail r is right arm <coughs> right arm r is right arm now a v l similarly a v l augmented unipolar left arm lead l means left arm so left arm is the positive active electrode the negative zero is formed by other two limbs right arm and left leg right arm left leg form the negative or zero potential so active electrode is in the left arm so avl avf f is foot left foot or left leg left leg is positive active electrode on the left inactive or zero potential formed by right arm and left arm both the arm form the that green is the zero potential or negative terminal left leg or the foot left foot is positive that's why it's called f augmented unipolar foot lead <coughs> So AVR, AVL, AVF. So we have done with six leads. Now precordial or chest leads are horizontally kept on the chest wall from right to left. V1 to V6. Like this as shown. V1 next to sternum, V2 next to sternum, then go laterally towards the axilla on the left side along the heart v3 v4 v5 literally you are surrounding the heart horizontally <coughs> going around the heart <coughs> to be very precise v1 is kept on the fourth intercostal space just to the right of the sternum v2 electrode is kept on the fourth intercostal space just to the left of the sternum then you use v4 first you do the v4 fifth intercostal space on mid clavicular line draw a line from the mid clavicle <coughs> that's in the fifth intercostal space between v2 and v3 you place v2 and v4 place V3 then in the same line as V5 same line as V4 in the anterior axillary line is V5 in the same line as V4 and V5 in the mid axillary line is a V6 So if you connect all these six twelve leads properly, connect it to the CG machine, turn on the machine automatically or manually, you get a strip of ECG. The paper runs with a specific speed. The recordings are done because it's a continuous activity, the cardiac activity or the cardiac cycle takes place. So the potentials are generated every cycle are sequentially recorded one after the other, one after the other, one after the other. You get a strip of ECG. Then you select leads one by one. Lead 1, 2, 3, AVR, AVL, AVF, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. The ECG is obtained in all these leads because each lead looks at the heart in a different way the configuration the waves are diff same identical but the configuration is slightly different because the lead is differently situated with respect to cardiac activity so you get an ecg strip how to read the ecg 
you should know about voltage and time calibration ecg paper is essentially a paper consists of small boxes or squares of 1 mm dimension squares 1 mm height and multiple length and also there are large squares large boxes 5 mm dimension this is used for time and voltage calibration voltage is standardized on the y axis before you begin the record you calibrate such a way that every 10 mm of height is 1 millivolt is the magnitude of the potential you record 1 millivolt of activity is 10 mm that is voltage calibration on the y axis on the x axis is the speed the time rather because the speed is known normal speed you used in humans is 25 mm per second therefore the ecg paper runs with a speed of 25 mm each second so that means 1 mm distance is 1 by 25 that is 0.04 second 25 mm 1 second 1 mm 0.04 seconds so when the paper moves by 1 mm that means you have spent about 0.04 second so if there is a wave or a line crossing 0.04 second that means it has crossed 1 mm distance this is the picture it shows how the voltage is calibrated on the y axis 1 mm is 10 small boxes this is how the paper looks like small box is 0.04 second big box has five squares 0.04 into 5 is 0.2 seconds 5 mm or rather 5 mm is 0.2 seconds so when the paper speed is known you know the time so time scale is on the x axis voltage scale is on the y axis A small box is 0.1 millimeter because 10 boxes 1 millivolt. Small box 0.1 millivolt. Small box is 0.04. Larger box is 0.2 seconds. This is the calculation. Paper speed is 25 millimeter per second. I repeat, 1 millimeter speed along the x-axis is 1 by 25. This is 0.04 seconds. this is the normal ecg recorded in lead 2 it's a good ecg normally the ideal ecg good for the beginners the idea you can see all the waves this is how it look like so we'll go on to the waves of the ecg how are these waves this is in literally comes of deflections or we call as waves how are they obtained how do they generate genesis we'll go back to the spread of the impulse which was the basis of the ecg you can see the sa no generating impulse spreading the impulses in the entire atria both atria you can see the purple sh shade simultaneous activation of atria or atrial depolarization produces a small deflection which we call as a p wave 
This is the first wave of the ECG, P wave. Due to atrial depolarization. P wave is atrial depolarization. Let's follow the impulse. Now impulse has spread along the interventricular septum along the bundle branches, right and left bundle branches. Quickly ventricles are activated. Both the ventricles are simultaneously excited. This is called ventricular depolarization process produces a wave complex called QRS. A small inverted wave called as Q, you can see, a large sharp wave called R, followed by another inverted S wave. This is the ventricular depolarization wave. This is a wave complex of Q and R and S. Two inverted Q and S, one upright sharp tall wave q r set of three waves why do you get this inward and upright waves in sequence like this this is because of the changing direction the wave of depolarization here we have to talk about the direction of the waves why at all you get a positive Wave, why at all it gets negative wave? This all depends on the placement of the electrode or the lead with respect to the spread of the impulse. If you look at the human heart, the net depolarization wave is from the base of the heart to the apex. So ideally the Atria depolarize, then the ventricular depolarize. So, wave, depolarization wave, wave of depolarization or the vector, we call it in physics, which has got a direction and a magnitude. The vector, cardiac vector is towards the downwards and to the left, you can indicate by an arrow, from base to the apex of the heart. So, if a wave if the electrode is parallelly along the wave or towards the wave conventionally the deflection is positive I repeat if an electrode is parallelly situated or towards the wave depolarization wave the deflection is positive by convention if by chance the wave of depolarization is away from the electrode, is going away. Electrode is somewhere, it is uh, depolarization is away. Conventionally, you get a negative wave. If the wave of depolarization is away, going away from the direction of the electrode, is negative. So, in L2, Q is due to interventricular septal depolarization, which is slightly from left to right not towards left, left to right. So you get a negative. S is the, again the base of the heart getting depolarization towards right, up and right. So it's negative. R is the major wave of depolarization occurring in the ventricle towards downwards and to the left. So R is upright. This is the direction of the waves. So now we have got the PQR rest due to the depolarization process. Ventricles remain depolarized state for some time before they get repolarized. This line is called as the isoelectric line. No activity because entire ventricle has depolarized. They have remained in the depolarized state, not yet repolarized. There is no deflection because no voltage change. All the ventricles are depolarized, they are silent. No, literally, there is not, no deflection is occurring. No potential recording. Here, 
let's ignore this line for time some time then you get the repolarization of the ventricles which is indicated by the red which occurs in a direction opposite to the direction of the depolarization depolarization occur last in the base first in the septum last in the base whereas repolarization occurs start from the base goes in the reverse direction for that the repolarization which is a reverse process is also upright wave so this is followed by repolarization wave called as a t wave t is the ventricular repolarization wave p is depolarization of the atria qr is ventricular depolarization t is the ventricular repolarization wave this is the normal ecg p q r s t this sequentially occurs one after the cycle after cycle activity occurs the voltage is shown here you can see it almost the voltage of r wave is 1 millivolts p is 0.1 or 0.2 millivolts q is very small maybe 0.1 less than 0.05 so this is how the voltage is calculated standardized or calibrated time is calibrated in x axis now there is after the p there is a small isoelectric phase isoelectric phase, no no activity before ventricles get depolarized atria are depolarized ventricles are yet to depolarize a small segment is seen is called as pr segment in the ecg this is due to the delay by the av node so the av node delays as i said before ventricle get this excited depolarized this is denoted by the pr segment similarly isoelectric period between s and t is called st segment so these te segments do not have any waves waveless durations are segments if you include the duration with the wave segment and a wave you get what is known as the interval with the waves at the duration with the waves qrs interval interval containing the q wave r wave and s wave qrs interval there's an important interval is called a pr interval it includes pr segment and a p wave beginning of the p wave to the beginning of the r wave or the q wave sometimes q is not seen as we see later q may not be seen in all the reads insignificant wave so you can see the beginning of the r also if you begin with beginning of the p wave begin with the p begin with the r from the beginning of the p wave to the beginning of the r wave is pr interval it includes a wave and the segment pr interval it's a very important interval which assesses the atrioventricular conduction time atrioventricular conduction time is assessed by pr interval clinically this is it then there's another important interval called as qt interval starting from the beginning of the q q to the end of the t beginning of the q to the end of the t is qt interval which is a ventricular complex depolarization include ventricular depolarization and ventricular repolarization another important q, clinical important interval qt interval 
these are the intervals and segments of the ECG. You need to calculate the intervals using the calibrated time. If you want to calculate the PI interval, count the number of small squares from the beginning of the P to the beginning of the R or beginning of the Q. If you, here, if you take the beginning of the R, there are one, two, three, four lines, small boxes. Each box measures about 0 0.04, each square 0 0.04 on the time scale, 0 0.04 seconds into times 4 squares, 0 0.04 times 4 square is equal to 0 0.01 seconds. So here the PR interval, the atrioventricular conduction time, this is 0.16 seconds, PR interval. The normal being 0 0.12 to 0.2 seconds, it should not be more than 0.2 seconds more than 0.2 second indicates abnormal delay between atria and ventricles, delay in conduction. You can see also the ST segment Q to interval. The QRS duration in here encompasses two small squares. 0 0.04 times 2 is 0 0.08 seconds, normal 0 0.08 to 0 0.1 second, 1 2 seconds at least, 0 0.1 or 0 0.12 seconds. QT 0 0.04 times about 8 or 8 and a half small squares, 0 0.34 seconds, normal 0 0.02. 32 to 0.43 seconds. So these are the three intervals which are calculated using a calibrated time scale. You can also calculate the heart rate because each wave complex PR, PQRST repeats every cycle. You will get sequential QR. PQRST, PQRST complexes. If the heart rate is regular, take any two waves like R. Here are two R's. Between the two R's, you take the duration of the between two R's, two peaks of R's. It's the duration of the cardiac cycle. It's called RR interval. In this ECG, the duration of the cardiac cycle or the RR interval can be calculated. If it's known, you can calculate the heart rate. Simple mathematics, heart rate is equal to 60 by RR or cardiac cycle duration. Here the RR interval is 1.2 seconds. 30 small squares or 6 large squares 6 into 5 30 30 small squares times 0 0.4 seconds 1.2 seconds the duration of cardiac cycle is 1.2 seconds per Every 1.2 seconds there is one cycle. How many cycles are there? 60 seconds. So 60 divided by 1.2 is 50 beats per minute. This is how you calculate the heart rate. You can calculate the heart rate of this patient if you can see the ECG count the number of small squares you can count the number of large squares and small squares
that is the RR interval between the two peaks of the two R waves. You can see 23 small boxes times 0.04 is about 0.92 seconds. Heart rate 60 divided by 0 0.92 comes to about 65 beats per minute. Probably, as you know, RR interval varies inversely with the heart rate. That means when the heart rate is more, the duration of each cycle will be less. Normal duration is 0.8 seconds with the heart rate about 75 bits per minute. If the heart rate increases, for example, 75 to 100, the duration of each cycle reduces. If the heart rate is less, say 60 or 50, each duration is more. So this is the meaning of RR interval or cardiac cycle duration varies inversely with the heart rate. Of course, PR interval also varies with the heart rate. You must be knowing the word tachycardia. Tachycardia is the increased heart rate. Sinus tachycardia here is originating from the SA node, which you get say after exercise or after excitement. Tachycardia. Normal heart rate is 60 to 100 beats per minute. It's a regular. This is the ECG showing the normal heart rate. Since the waves are normal, you can see P, Q, R, S. Q is hardly seen here. As I said, Q is inconspicuous in most of the leads. P followed by R, S is prominently seen, then the T. Again, P, Q, R, S. P, Q, R, S. Recurring rhythmic cardiac activity showing the ECG waves. If you can calculate the heart rate, or 20 approximately 20 boxes small boxes times 0 0.04 second it's about 0.8 second which is normal cardiac cycle 60 divided by 0.8 is 75 beats as i said this is a normal heart rate let's see in ecg where the heart rate is more you can see the waves occurring more frequently in any given time Cardiac cycle duration is less. It's calculated to be in 10 boxes, 10 times 0 0.04, 0 0.4 second, half of the normal. 60 divided by 0.4 is 150 beats. So that means the heart rate has increased from 75 to 150, doubled. Heart rate is double. Cardiac cycle duration is halved. Has become half of normal 0 0.8 to 0 0.4 that's the meaning of this word i mean sentence heart rate inversely varies with the cardiac cycle this is called sinus tachycardia which you often get how to interpret cardiac rhythm rhythm means the spacing between the beats and the waves. Normal rhythm is said to be regular. What does it mean? The SA node produces impulse at a regular interval, and conducted through the AV node at regular intervals, ventricles are excited at regular intervals. So in the ECG, it is indicated or reflected as the regular RR interval. RR interval remaining constant, no change. You can see here the RR interval, the R is coming very regularly. You need not calculate, you can just see that it is very regular. 
all interval any time you can see they're all same this equal this equal this 20 boxes 20 times 0 0.4.8 seconds e this is an ecg with regular rhythm sinus rhythm look at this ecg rr interval is varying here is so much this is very less they are not equal which is not equal to the next this is an irregular rhythm this ecg is obviously abnormal is an irregular rhythm irregular rhythm cardiac rhythm is an abnormality again unequal rr interval Therefore, these abnormal rhythms which are called as arrhythmias are best diagnosed by ECG. So those diseases which are characterized by the irregularity in the initiation and spread of impulses, they lead to irregular rhythm of the heart. They are all called as cardiac arrhythmias, arrhythmias, abnormal rhythms. One of the examples, heart block, we will not go into those details. This is one heart showing. Varied PR intervals, varied PR intervals. You can see PR interval is in each cycle is different. Sometimes one beat is missed, QRS is missed. So they're all abnormalities. You can see if you look at such ECGs, you know that some abnormality. So this is called arrhythmias or blocks, conduction blocks. Now we'll go to the another important thing called bradycardia. Sinus bradycardia. This is a normal sinus rhythm. 0.8 seconds are interval. 75 bits per minute is a heart rate. Look at this. Slow, infrequent cycles. R is coming much slowly or infrequently, but regularly. Our interval is only 0 0.04, I mean sorry, 1.4, 0 0.04 times 35, 1.4 seconds, 43 beats per minute, this is very very less, sometimes you see in individuals with high vagal tone or athletes, you can see as low as 45, 50. It's normal, sinus bradycardia, not very frequent, but you can see sinus bradycardia, especially sleep, athletes, you can see this. RR interval is very prolonged. So then different heart blocks, first degree, second degree, third degree. They're all diagnosed by heart diseases. Ischemic heart diseases are like angina. Are di diagnosed by ECG. By changes in the ST segment and T waves, inversion, etc. Which occur in specific leads. You can see the normal ECG, which is red, the patient's ECG, T wave inversion has occurred. This is a classical picture in ischemic heart diseases, angina. Just 
So now the serious condition called a myocardial infarction in mine. The blood supply stopped, very common heart attack, call it as characteristic changes occur in the ECG, so diagnosis of heart attack or the myocardial infarction is mainly based on ECG finding along with the biochemical changes in the blood, but ECG is very, very classically different or abnormal. Don't worry about all the changes, but you can see a stitch segment changes, ST elevation, etc. Electrolyte imbalances can be diagnosed by ECG, hyperkalemia, tall T waves like this, tall T waves. This is the entron triangle. I think here we will end our discussion of ECG. Next class we will see how ECG recorded a bad side. Thank you, patient listening. Thank you very much. If there are questions, you can ask.